Welcome back. You're listening to Cross the Border. My website is crosstheborder.org. Uh, we are today continuing in this segment here our study in the book of Ecclesiastes. I've ended up in Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 27. Behold, this I have, have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account, which yet my soul seeketh. But I find not one man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. What is the preacher saying here? He's, he's being a little bit evasive here, I think, in what he's saying. And it's a hard thing to say. <laughs> oh, boy. And uh, I would add the word, who knows, or is wise, because that's what he's talking about here. He's talking about to know, to search out wisdom and the reason of things. And he's saying, I've only found one man in a thousand who is aware of what is really going on in the world but he said among women among all those have I found have I not found one that understands and uh, you know men and women are different and wow it is rare to find a man that understands that has sought out wisdom and found it lives by it in his life to find one in a thousand and should I go there well the Almighty made men and women different and he certainly did the man he made first and the woman came out of the man he took whatever genetic material from the rib of the man or as we have at the story the rib of the man and he made the woman so he took the material of the man and out of the man he made the woman the woman is not a man uh, but if the woman is made from the man if the woman came out of the man then everything that the woman is made of is in the man and I'm not talking about gender specific uh, differences here uh, I'm talking about the makeup of the man, what a man is and what a woman is. The seed of the woman is in the man. That's, that's a biological fact. That's a fact of biology. It is the seed of the man that determines whether a child is male or female. That's in the seed of the man. The seed for a man is not in the woman. And that's why the seed of the woman was free from guilt. And when the Holy Spirit impregnated the woman, there was no guilt and there was no you shall surely die curse upon the Messiah that differentiated him from all men. That's why he was called the second Adam because he was the second created man created in the seed by the Holy Spirit implanted into the womb of the virgin a new Adam a new creation a new man but born of a woman in order to qualify to be the Redeemer the kinsman Redeemer of mankind so we see that beautiful imagery there but women and men are different there is everything that a woman is made up of has come out of the man so is present in the man but there are things in a man that are not present in a woman. Men and women are different. One is not greater or better than the other in, in any way that men can count greatness or, or worth or value. There is a difference there. The woman, the scripture says, is the weaker vessel. And we see that in the physical aspects. The woman is physically weaker too, but also has other weaknesses. Now the man has his weakness, and that's demonstrated uh, in, the, uh, in the Genesis account where the man succumbed to the woman and her weakness. And they were scolded after that, that the woman was supposed to submit to the man. 
but her desire would be to rule over the man, but she was supposed to submit to him. So there is a difference there between men and women are different, and they have their different places. In his government, the man is over the woman in family government. When a woman usurps the authority of a man, we have trouble, and we see that trouble in our society today. We have divorce, rampant. We have children without fathers, daughters, and sons without fathers to guide them, which is just more folly and more wickedness. We have the maternal presumption that the value of the woman or the mother is greater than the value of the man, whereas the scripture says the opposite is true. Now, a man or a boy needs a mother because that's the way the Almighty designed it. And a girl needs a mother. But a boy also needs a father, and a girl also needs her father. The scripture plainly demonstrates that if, the, if a child could only have one of the two, a mother or a father, the scripture gives pres, precedence and preference to the father. It is more important for a girl, for a daughter, to have a good father than to have a good mother. It is more important for a boy to have a good father than a good mother. But in, by the Almighty's design, they should have both, and they should both be good. But I would rather see children have a godly mother than by herself than a wicked father by himself. And then we go back to the inheritance and the responsibility of family. No one is meant. This in, in our Roman society, we have mothers floating out here by themselves collecting welfare or whatever, falling under the state, and then the state becomes the daddy. See, they've destroyed the family government, and they've replaced it with parents patriae, and that is the state is your daddy, basically. The state becomes the father. The state becomes the patriarch, takes the place of the patriarch in family government and provides for the orphans and the widows. See, so, so there was supposed to be a responsibility there in the Heavenly Father's inheritance and family law. There were no widows and orphans, and you know there were no unmarried women with children because it was the responsibility of of the family to place that widow, if there was a widow, in a family with a father within that family clan immediately, or at least to make sure that they, that, that family, that widow and those orphans were in that family clan of the father with a grandfather, uncles, whatever there to take the place of that father, not the state and not welfare. So we see what a mess things have come into. Yes, as my good friend would say, what a mess <laughs> we have out here in the world with the destruction of the kingdom of heaven and that, that government that he ordained among men and demonstrated early on and he gave to the children of Israel, which they threw off and said, we want a king. We want a government like the other nations. And then we throw off the family government because the governments of men tend to destroy the family government, especially with the new social order we have today in the worldwide Roman Empire that has taken over and is taking over the entire earth today. Not conducive to family government, and especially the family government which was ordained by the Almighty in His Word. So there you have it. I'm not going to delve too deeply in uh, what Solomon says here, here in three verses. It seems somewhat evasive. <laughs> Perhaps he has tried to, uh, to uh, put off the wrath of the, all the wicked feminists out there that would grab this and assail him for saying that uh, I have not found a woman among all those. Lo, this only have I found that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Yes, indeed. Chapter 8 and verse 1 of Ecclesiastes. Who is as wise, who is as the wise man, and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom 
maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. I counsel thee to keep the, com the king's commandment, and that in regard of the oath of God, and the oath of the Almighty. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Stand not in an evil thing, for he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. Where the word of a king, where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? Okay. Who is as the wise man, who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? I counsel thee to keep the king's commandments. And we could replace up here with the king's, the government. I counsel thee to keep the, the government's commandment. And that in regard to the oath of God. Okay? So, if we keep the laws or the commandments of men, we do it in regard to the oath or the commandments, the higher law of the Almighty. For instance, I travel by automobile on the roads out here. And the commandments of the king or the government in sway says that I should wear a seat belt. Okay. Now I regard that in the, with the oath of in the oath of the Almighty, and I find no commandment that says thou shalt not wear a seat belt, and it causes me to break no commandment of the Almighty to wear that seat belt. So I will put the seat belt on that I do not offend them, because I know if there are little uh, enforcers out there driving around in their black and whites or whatever color they're that's in fancy in your neighborhood and they espy you in your in your automobile without a strap across your shoulders they will turn on the little flashing lights and come up behind you and if you don't stop they will shoot you dead so you must stop and if you're if you're if you have a license they will ticket you and if you don't have a license, they will perhaps tow your vehicle away and leave you standing on the side of the road if you're fortunate. If you're more fortunate, they perhaps may let you go and about your way if you're wise enough to know how to handle them. Um, if you're not fortunate or if you resist or if you're nasty to them and they're in a bad mood, uh, they may tase you arrest you, beat you up, even shoot you, and take your vehicle anyway. <laughs> the perils of dealing with the enforcers of the commandments of men. So he counsels us wisely. He says, I counsel you to keep the commandments of the realm, the king's commandment. He uses that word here. And in his day, in his time, well, it was mostly kings you were dealing with. Today we have images of governments out here that uh, have enforcers. So he says, I count you to keep those commandments and that in regard to the oath of the Almighty. And, you know, I've taken, I, I put the commandments of the Almighty, of God, as he puts here, he uses the word Elohim in the Hebrew. So I use the translation God here, rightly so. It's the English word. I don't care what the, you know, what the etymology of the word or the history of it is. I don't know any of that. And uh, I speak contemporary English, so I'm going to use the word here. I counsel thee to keep the command, the commandment of uh, the king's commandment in that regard to the oath of the Almighty. And going back to my illustration of uh, out here. So I put on my, the lap belt, or I maybe even feign it and not really even buckle it, though I usually do. Sometimes I'll just slip it over my arm. So it's, you know, it's straight there. So we have the vision, okay? If they espy me from the front, they're going to see a strap across my breast or over my shoulder. And they're not going to stop me for that. But perhaps, say, they did stop me for whatever reason. And... Um, now, they ask me for a license. Well, in my case, see, I don't have to break the Almighty's law to put that strap over my shoulder to please them in that way, or to go the speed limit, or to stop at stop signs, 
or to obey all of the traffic rules out there that they have. And they put all those out there for a good purpose so that everyone will conduct uh, their affairs on the highways in a certain order and so that everyone else knows what to expect and there's no surprises, right? And uh, there's no accidental accidents by those surprises and everybody can move along safely. So there's a good reason for all those rules. And perhaps, you know, this, the seatbelt rule, you know, that's because the legislatures have been paid and they think it's safer for whatever reason. So they want to be your nanny, too. I'll let them be my nanny, you know, in regard to whatever, as long as they don't require me to break the law of the Almighty. But now I've got a problem if they do stop me. I, uh, they're requiring me to break the law of the Almighty to get a license now. Before they didn't. They didn't used to do that. And so I got the driver's license, even though I'm not a driver, and I have liberties and a right to travel and all of that. But then they said, well, you have to sign up for the mark of the beast, a monetary mark, with the U.S. government. So you have to volunteer. So, or, or another way I like to put it is only socialists qualify to get a driver's license in, in the state of California, Right. Only socialist quality. You have to be a card-carrying socialist. So I call that discrimination because I don't want to be a socialist. You know, so if you practice socialism, I'm sorry, you know, you can have your delusions and your illusions about it. But if you practice socialism, by definition, you are a socialist, okay? So if, and, and if you get the card with the nine-digit number and you sign the contract for the card... Oh, well, you're a socialist. I'm sorry whether you like it or not. You've been duped. And most people have been duped and, and deceived into it. and Or treated it so lightly that they didn't regard what they were doing. But I'm not a socialist, number one. Because socialism is against the commandments of the Almighty. Because it's where the government steals from one man to give to another. And also it's legislated Charity, that's another thing that the Almighty hates. Legislated charity. He wants everyone to give free will. Now go through his, his commandments. Go through the Old Testament law, and you'll find out that all charity is voluntary. And he loves a cheerful giver, not a coerced giver. Okay? And of course, they do the, all this with good intentions, and like I said, it destroys the family. Uh, even James upheld the law. He said... Uh, the true religion is to take care of the orphans and widows, of course, pointing back to the law that we've been talking about. So they require me to break the commandment of the Almighty to get the driver's license. If you want to understand that a little bit more, my stand on that, you can go to my website. I have an article there. It's called Biblical Sovereign. You can read that. I also have a travel document, and you'll see a link on the right-hand side of my website. Just scroll down a little bit. You'll see... Uh, travel document and it says uh, uh, CDL DUI stop or something there's there's a, a yellow sign there and it says travel document on it click on that and you can read my stand on that and that that that's the document that's my travel document that I carry with me and hopefully when I show that to them and uh, they see my stand they usually just let me go because it's too much it's more trouble than it's worth to deal with me and uh, of course I'm, gonna, I'm kind considerate respectful I respect the power I respect the man that has the job and the job he has to do and the constraints that he's under so I'm kind and courteous but usually they just leave me alone because I'm not out there uh, breaking their you know the king's commandments for the highway yeah, I'll, I'll put the lap belt on I won't talk on my cell phone while I'm tra while I'm moving down the road, um, I won't go faster than the suggested speed limit. I'll stop at the stop signs. I don't have a problem. I can do that. I'm a patient man. It's fine, and every that way everyone knows else out there on the road knows what to expect, and nobody's going to be accidentally hitting me because I surprise them by not following the king's commandments for the highway. See. So there you go. That's what I see here. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment. 
and that in regard to the oath of the Almighty, of Elohim God. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Stand not in an evil thing, you know. Don't go with the crowd, whatever. Don't be hasty to go out of the sight of the king or the Almighty. Stand not in an evil thing, you know. Depart from evil. If you see an evil thing coming or people are taking an evil stand, walk away from it. You know, I've got people devising evil from me, and I see others come along, and they listen to the evil whisperings and all of the lies of my enemy, and they stand with them hastily, because, of course, they're going to get their promised reward or whatever for taking that stand, and they get snared. Be not hasty. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Stand not in an evil thing. For he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. And of course, going back to the king and his commandment. Where the word of a king is, there is power. So where the word of the government or the law of the government is, there is power. When those guys with their little red flashing lights uh, get behind you, you better stop because there is power there. And you need to understand that power. And we all understand that power. That's why most people just capitulate. And they sign up for socialism to get the license or, ha or to have it because they're afraid of the power. But see, now i got another commandment that says, Fear not them, they can kill the body. Yes, they could kill me. But if I act wisely, it's unlikely I'm going to get killed on the side of the road by the policy enforcers. I'm, I'm wise enough to know how to act, and I hope that everyone else is too. If you're out there obeying the commandment of the Almighty, which causes you to be an infringement in the commandments of men. And we'll come back and we'll pick up here if you're listening to Cross the Border. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Welcome back. You're listening to Cross the Border. We're continuing here our study in Ecclesiastes. And where did we leave off? Oh yes, we're talking about the commandments of the king. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Stand not in an evil thing, for he doeth whatever pleases him. And that was the rule of kings. And I guess the legislature doth doeth whatever pleaseth them, or 
whoever gives them the most money to pass the laws and to build the people. Uh, that's pretty much the way it works today in the legislature in the in the in the worldwide Holy Roman Empire that we live under today. Where the word of the king is, there is power. And yes, we need to understand that power. The word of the king. When the guy turns on his little lights behind you and you feel that, um, that chill go up your spine and that sudden fear comes upon you, you pull over and you because you realize the power is there. It's the power of the sword, the power of the gun. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? Well, in the... In the in, the, in history and the, when the king gave his commandment I mean if he said you were dead you were dead uh, things don't quite work like that today but uh, in a lot of ways they do um, you can if you act the wrong way when one of their policy enforcers is uh, dealing with you um, you can end up dead whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing and a wise man heart, man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. So, you know, it's not an absolute. You, know, you can still feel an evil, evil thing. And many things that are written in the scripture were not meant to be absolutes. Uh, many people like to pick and choose what they're going to take as absolute or strictly interpret. And uh, what they're not going to strictly interpret. Um, but... Generally, if you keep the law of the realm that you're in, um, you will feel no evil thing. You know, that they'll leave you alone pretty much. Or at least keep up the appearance <laughs> that you're keeping the commandment. I'll keep the, sh the, the shoulder, but, you know, they can't see what's in my pocket. The technology hasn't uh, gone that far. I see the day coming that uh, they're going to... They're, they're, you see the technology developing where they're going to be able to read your license plate or a, some type of transponder on your vehicle and know that the owner of the vehicle is properly licensed, uh, has properly paid the uh, protection fee racket fees to, to stay on the road without being harassed and that everything is order in order and that they have broken even the commandments of the Almighty or get stopped because uh, that's basically but today they don't have all that technology developed uh, into where they're using it yet but it's coming the technocracy and total control is coming of course for the good of the whole yes the new social order is uh, rising up and the technocracy is is starting to play a big part in it you know they have license plate readers now and uh, if your license plate you know so that makes the the, the police kind of lazy they don't have to pay attention anymore because the computer is going to do it and, and probably keep them busy enough you know if they have license plate readers in their vehicles and uh, that's starting to become popular among the policy enforcers out there and so they uh, read your license plate, and if everything isn't in order, at least regarding the license plate and any other information that may come up on that, well, then you're going to be in trouble. And they're going to, the alarm will go off, and uh, they'll look for that vehicle because you're in close proximity, and then you will be stopped. And that should keep them pretty busy, I would think, once they all get armed with that. Um, and to me, it's a good thing if they're busy because they don't have time to pay attention to me I'm just trying to be invisible you know I I travel and uh, under the shadow of the wings of the Almighty and that's where I find my rest so pay attention where the word of the king is where where the where the word of a king is there is power and who may say unto them what doest thou Whoso keepeth the commandment feeleth no evil thing. So the applicability is even here for these words that were written, you know, whatever, 3,000, up to 3,000 years ago, whatever it was. Um, yes, uh, 2,500, 3,000 years ago. Yeah, somewhere in there. Maybe closer to 3,000 than 2,500 years ago that Solomon wrote these words. It was at the beginning of the kings. He was the second 
well, he wasn't the second king. He was the third king in Israel, I should say, because you had Saul, David, and then Solomon in the line of kings there. So wise words that uh, transcend the ages of time and find their applicability even today. The words of Solomon, the preacher, preaching to the Ecclesia in the book Ecclesiastes. Because to every purpose, okay, let me we'll jump back here. A wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. Because to every purpose there is a time and judgment. Therefore, the misery of man is great upon him. Yes, there's even a time to be miserable. <laughs> I have to admit it. There's, there's a time to feel anguish. And I feel it. There's a time to be miserable. And I have my moments. I try to keep it to moments, uh, not to hours or days. I don't like prolonged misery, but we all have to taste it. We've all had some that was prolonged. But uh, I try to use wisdom and judgment to keep the misery down to just moments of misery. Let let my enemies have the 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 misery of weeks and months and years. Let their life be a misery. And I'll just, uh, I'll experience it and taste it occasionally. No prolonged misery for me. Uh, thanks be to the Almighty and the comfort of His Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And what wisdom, knowledge, and understanding He's given me to uh, live and discern these things and to make the right judgment at the right time. So I repeat it again. I'm a, I, I, you know, I read this and I go back over it and read it again, and I hope it doesn't bother people, because I do this a lot, especially when I get into things like this. You know, try not to do it so much like when we're going through the genealogy. <laughs> so some things we get through quickly, but when I'm, getting, when I'm pondering these words in and, and this great sermon of the preacher called Vanity of Vanities for the Ecclesia, the called out ones, and I find such wonderful and um, applicability even for the day that I'm living in. Uh, I have to ponder these words. I have to, I have to taste them and turn them over on my lips and in my ears uh, at least a few times. So here we go. Wise, a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment because to every purpose there is a time and judgment every instance every circumstance in life to every purpose there is a time and a judgment therefore the misery of man is great upon him in the time of misery it's great because there's a time and purpose for it for he knoweth not that which shall be for who can tell him when it shall be there is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit neither hath he power in the day of death and there is no discharge in that war neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it when death comes he calls it a war there's no discharge in that war when you're fighting death and the, and the day of it has come there's no discharge. You're gone. I've seen it. I've seen death come on people, and there's no power over it. It's the day of death. There is no discharge in that war. We fight it. It is a war. We fight to stay alive. I fight every day. I, I fight the battle against death and decay every day. I know it's going to take me eventually, but I'm fighting it. That's right. That's, that's why I keep his... Uh, his commandments because I'm fighting it I want to prolong my life I want to live and serve him as long as I can so I use the wisdom that he's given me the wisdom to follow the dietary commandments the wisdom to understand what is set apart what he created to be received with thanksgiving by them that know and believe the truth you know that by prayer that what is sanctified by his word and prayer for me to eat you know, wisdom and understanding there. What did he create to be received with thanksgiving? Well, it wasn't ice cream and it wasn't soda pop, you know. 
and it wasn't all the conca con concoctions that you find in the boxes and bottles that lined the supermarket shelves out there. You know, it was in the food that he created to be received with thanksgiving by them that believe and know the truth, sanctified by the word of God and prayer, the word of God first. So that's why I pay attention to the dietary law. And I add to that wisdom and I supplement an understanding of what is going on out here and what I need to do to maintain my health and this temple of the Holy Spirit, of his Holy Spirit that he's imparted to me to comfort me in my life so that I fight the war against the demise and the day of death, that I might prolong it as long as I can, that I might be a treasure to my children and my children's children and my great-grandchildren and to anyone else that I can be in my life, that I might bring many souls to salvation. Let me work and labor as long as I can live and fight this war against death and stay on my two, own, my two feet and keep my mind sound that I may impart these words of life, that I may have this privilege to do this work and this labor for the Almighty and for whoever he may call to benefit by it. So there is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit. And I believe here he's still talking. He's talking about death, you know, because he said that the spirit of the beast or the animals, they go downward to the earth where they came from because they're of the earth and their spirit is of the earth. But the spirit of the man goes upward. And that, of course, at the demise of his uh, mortality, when his mortality comes to an end. And a uh, man hath no power over the spirit to retain it when the day of death comes. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. Uh, plain and simple. Wickedness, your wickedness will not deliver you. All you that devise evil against your neighbor, that take up a reproach against your neighbor without a cause, your wickedness will not deliver you. You may steal, you may kill, you may even destroy your neighbor, but it will not deliver you in the day of death. And your reward will be the greatest punishment that you could imagine. You will pay the price for your own sins. Repent. The kingdom is at hand. Repent and learn obedience to his commandments. Stop your theft. Stop bearing false witness against your neighbor. Quit your adultery, your spiritual adultery. Discontinue your blaspheming of the Holy Spirit and the work that he is trying to do in your life to bring you, convict you of sin, sin bring you to repentance, and teach you obedience. Don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit in that because your wickedness will not deliver those that are given to it chapter 8 and verse 9 all this have I seen and applied my heart to every work that is done under the sun there is a time wherein one man ruleth over another to his own hurt yes people get power some have little power and they exercise that power over others cruelly or to satisfy the lust of their own flesh or their own greed or their own sloth because they have the power to do it but they do it to their own hurt he said he continues and so I saw the wicked buried who had come and gone from the place of the holy ah uh -huh. they you got these guys they come and go they go they come and go from the place of the holy they go to church every week they have their holy service they they the ceremonial or morally holy uh, so they they go to the sanctuary they go through the rituals <clears throat> he says and so I saw the wicked buried who had come and gone from the place of the holy and they were forgotten in the city where they had so done this is also vanity because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil so you wonder why men do evil because they aren't punished for it well yes they commit adultery and they get away with it uh-huh so they go out and they continue to commit adultery sodomy whatever adultery 
murder, theft, covetousness, fornication, bearing false witness against their neighbor, and committing theft thereby, legislating wickedness, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily so people think well I got away with it and they think they can steal as long as they don't get caught or they can commit theft as long as they do it legally they can kill their children in the womb because it's legal mm -hmm. they can get away with it because the sentence of the Almighty is not executed speedily therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil because they get pleasure out of it or whatever benefit they get out of doing the evil and they get away with the evil they're fully set they start practicing evil fully set in them to do evil and it's a snare you can't it's hard to get free once you start practicing evil you start to justify it in yourself. Well, it was legal. Oh, I really needed that. Or they deserved it. <laughs> I deserve to take that from them. And then they tell themselves lies and others lies to, to make themselves feel better about it. And they fully set in their heart and they got away with it. So why shouldn't they do it some more? Fully set in them to do evil. Boy, you know, you read these wise words of Solomon here and and you look around, you see it, and it's so applicable. You see the demonstration of the truth of this wisdom and knowledge and understanding. It shouts from the, from the neighborhoods. It shouts from the television and the radio. It shouts everywhere you go. These things are shouted at you. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God. Is there a little bit of the gospel in there? Yeah, you might think so. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. Because if you fear the Almighty, you fear before him, you're going to learn obedience. You're going to repent of that evil that you've done. We've all done evil a hundred times. I can say it. Yep. I've done evil a hundred times. I'm sure it's been more than that. <laughs> yes, we all can say that. I've done evil a hundred times. And I believe that's why he was saying, you know, don't be overly righteous. You know, don't appear. Don't, don't present yourself as overly righteous. Because guess what? Yeah, I've done evil a hundred times or more. And many more, I'm sure. I could say a thousand times easily. I think I'll stop there. I don't want to dwell too much on <laughs> the faults of my youth and my past. And, you know, if I live another 50 years, I'm sure that I'm going to do evil a hundred more times. It grieves me to say that. I guess that's a good thing. Because I don't ever want to sin in my life again. I don't ever want to even be tempted. But I guess I'm going to have to, that's going to be saved for the resurrection. That is the promise then, that I'll never sin and I'll never be tempted. Hallelujah. I can praise the name of the Almighty for that. Hallelujah. The, that, that day I long for. But it shall not be well with the wicked. Okay, well, let's take it back in context. Though the sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear the Almighty, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, those that practice wickedness, that don't repent, that don't fear the Almighty, because those are the wicked ones. They, they continue, they take up a reproach against their neighbor, they continue to bear false witness for their own means, they steal and they continue in that wickedness because they get away with it. They think they're getting away with it because judgment is not executed speedily. They think, well, I got away with it. I can continue to get away with it. And they practice wickedness. It shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall he prolong his days, which are a sh as a shadow, because he feareth not before God doesn't fear the Almighty 
to keep his commandments, to learn obedience. That's the difference between the righteous and the wicked. The righteous is a sinner. He's, you know, uh, he's done evil a hundred times. Will still do evil because evil is a departure, a disobedience to the strict commandment, to the law, the letter of the law. Is it not? Because he feareth not before the Almighty. There is a vanity which is done in, upon the earth. And there be a just there be just men to whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. That means a uh, little bit of a uh, old English here. There be just men to whom it happeneth according to the wicked. That means the wicked devices of those that do wickedness, the liars, the cheaters, those that bear false witness and hate their neighbor without a cause. Yes. They exercise wickedness. They bring evil upon the just men, the righteous man. Again, there be wicked men to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity. When I commended mirth, because a man hath no better thing under the sun, than to eat and to drink and to be merry, for that shall abide with him of his labor the days of his life, which God giveth him under the sun. When I plied mine heart to know wisdom, and to see the business that is done upon the earth, for also there is that neither, day nor night, see asleep with his eyes. Then I beheld all the work of God, that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun, because though a man labor to seek it out, yet he shall not find it. Yea, further, though a wise man think to know it, yet shall he not be able to find it. There's no end to learning. You know, it's like you get out the microscope and you say, ah, I see. Get a more powerful microscope and say, ah, I see. Where does it end? Where do you stop seeing? You know, where do you get to the final end of it? There, it it's, it's unsearchable. I mean, you can get infinitely small or you can get infinitely large. There's no end to the work of the Almighty. You can never find it out. And it's the same with wisdom. Where can you say, I found all wisdom? You can't. You just keep searching. There's no end to it. So we come to chapter 9 and verse 1 and that's where we'll pick up next time on Cross the Border visit my website like I said I'd like to hear from you go to the contact page there contact me leave a message there uh, visit the pages there leave comments there on the appropriate pages uh, I kinda prefer it to, when people leave the comments on the appropriate page well as in everything always in everything you do, bless the name of the Almighty and say, Hallelujah. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, -S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn, the Jewish people are eager, most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? 
Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a re-established Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org.